Affinity Designer tutorial for beginners. Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to use this Affinity Designer and where you can get it. So let's get into it. First off, you're going to go to the Affinity Designer website and you can see over here they have different price points. This is not a free program. You're going to have to purchase this or you can use a 10 day free trial and then consider purchasing it. And it says Affinity Designer is almost $55, but they usually do have discounts. Right now they don't have any, but it's very likely that they have sales going on and you can probably purchase it at half the price using some coupons or vouchers that you find online. So this is a very professional software. So it's not just for beginners. If you're working in design for years and years, even then this tool is going to be enough for you because it has so many powerful features and it's still very easy to use. So even if you are a beginner, it's not going to be like a climbing a mountain to use this. So moving on back to our Affinity Designer. So over here, I've installed my free trial version of Affinity Designer. And you can see at the top, you have your file, edit, text, layers, select, view, and we're going to add a new file so like a new canvas now it's going to give you your presets so if you have any presets that you work on depending on whatever industry you're working on so it may be if you're creating t-shirt designs you're probably going to make those in like 4500 to 5500 pixels so you can select your own presets they also have presets that they provide so they have you know their standard paper sizes and all that they also have their press ready presets their photo presets their web presets and architectural and devices presets. So we're just going to select a, actually we're going to go for a t-shirt design. So that's usually in inches. You can add, make it in inches or in pixels. Uh, you can select that option as well. So we're just going to keep it 12 by 11 inches and DPI. So DPI means the quality of your print or your design. So you want to keep that as high as possible. So I'm just going to leave it at 300 right now. And we're going to click on create now once you have created your little design or your little canvas i mean you can see at the left all of your tools have opened up so i'm going to guide you guys through each of these tools and what they really do now at the top you have your moving tool which is the shortcut is v so you can just click on v to whenever you want to use your cursor your basic cursor and below that you have your artboard tool so the artboard tool is basically like something you can use to develop another new canvas. So you can see like that, you can create different artboards. So if you want to work on like side illustrations or you're, you're doing something of that sort, you might want to create artboard. So this is what the artboard tool is. I'm just going to delete these. I'm going to go back to a standard size. We were at 12, 11 inches. So yeah. And now below that, you have your node tool. So what the node tool does is actually, I'm just going to show you guys via a shape. I'm going to click on the square. We're going to add a square and I make it red. And now if you click on this node tool, you get two options. So the point transform tool or the general node tool. If you click on point transform, it's going to take the object. Okay. And it's only going to move one point. So wait. You see, it's, it's working via this singular point. So if you place it over here, you know, it's going to freeze that point. So you can just move it around freely with that point at that specific area. And if you click on the overall node tool, it's just going to keep it uh, as a entire object. So you can select like a couple of objects that you've placed on top of each other and then move them around. So below that, you have your corner tool. What this does is it moves corners like if we select this image, we can make the corner rounded or there are a lot of other options. So you can make the corners uh, square, you can make the corners anything you might like. So you can see at the top, you have none rounded, straight, concave, cut out. So it's going to select this. We're going to move it here. And now we're going to go back to our corner tool. And so if we were to place it back to how it looked so maybe we're, we're gonna make it like this concave we can make it straight edged we can make it cut out so this is a very useful tool if you're doing design because you don't want to you know constantly measure stuff and cut it out like that so you can do all of that using this little corner tool after that you have your contour tool so 
this tool is basically going to help you uh, define the depth of your elements in your picture or illustration. After that, you have your general pen to write, you know, create lines and whatnot. And it's a very flexible kind of tool, which I really like, and it provides different nodes. So if you don't like a, the placement of a certain node, you can just move it. This is just very helpful in that regard. Now, after that, you have your little pencil. So if you want to write like that, you can do that. And obviously, there are a lot of colors, a lot of thicknesses you can choose from. I'm just showing you guys like the standard. After that, you have your brush. So for painting, whatnot, you have that. And you can also make gradients using, uh, using this application. So after that, you have your general context. It's going to really fill out your elements. So let's just say, let's click on this. Remove these lines actually first. I'll remove these from here. Now, if you click on this context, it's going to provide you with a gradient. So you can select any colors that you might like, and then you can place them within this. So you can see if we select gray to pink, and you can just create a gradient using this tool within any kind of image. Now below that you have your transparency tool, so that's gonna really just make stuff transparent. It's a good way to indicate light. If you're creating like faces and you know images that have light, you can really use this transparency tool to actually gauge and get an idea of where the lights and shadows are gonna be. Now after that you have your place image tool, so if you have any images you wanna upload, you can upload them via this tool. Then you have your general vector crop tool, your squares, rectangles, you know, circles. And below that you have your artistic text. You can have text, general like straight text, or you can have text in a box. And then you have your general text. You have your color picker. You have your general hand tool, which helps you move around your canvas. And then you have your general search tool. Now you can see over here, we have our assets open. So these are just, you know, basically free presets that you have, free creative ideas that you have that you can just take a look at to see what looks like what, how everything is done. So these are just for your example. They're just going to help you out in creating better illustrations. So at the top, you can see your file edit and your text. So all of your text categorization settings can be done via this tab over here at the top. Then you have your layers. So you can group layers, arrange them, align them. You can do all of that from here without having to, you know, touch the designs and mess them up. You have your select, you have your general view, how you want to view your canvas, and then you have your windows and help. And on the right, you can see you have your color, swatches, stroke, and brushes. So you can see there are a lot of brushes available. Let's just say we're going to click on brush. We want this kind of brush. And you can just start working like that. So this is just very easy to use. And this really can help you add more dimension to your images, your illustrations. And what I'm just going to do is I'm going to delete these extra little stuff I've created. And you can see even on like squares or shapes or anything that you've previously placed, you can add your brush effects or your brush design. So you can write names using this and it's really just going to help you add more of a artistic touch to your t-shirt prints or mug prints or whatever you're creating. So I hope you guys found this tutorial helpful and you are now able to create your creative designs and illustrations using Affinity. Uh, this is a paid tool, but I think it's a very powerful tool. Even if you're a professional or a beginner, whatever category you belong to, you can really use this tool to get the most amount of benefit from it. And I think it's definitely worth the money. Money. So I hope you guys are able to decide if you want to purchase it or not and I'll catch you guys in the next video.